Hi guys, so we've seen in our previous video how to set up an iGyro using the software included in the little black boxes. However, that isn't always quite enough. Personally, I like to do it manually. And even when you do use the software, you often require some fine tuning after that basic setup. So in this video, I'm going to show you the manual way of setting up that iGyro and specifically how to fine tune that iGyro once you've got that basic setup done. Now, for anyone who hasn't done this before, I would recommend that they viewed our previous video showing how to use the software included in the iGyros for the basic setup and then skip straight to the second half of this video for the fine tuning. However, if you're curious how it works or how to do it, by all means, enjoy. Okay, so in this first step, I'm going to show you how to set up the basics of the gyro manually, as opposed to using the setup wizard. If, as I would recommend, you have used the setup wizard, you can skip past this part of the video onto the second half. Alternatively, if you want to do it manually, this is how. Okay, so we go into the menu. And we work our way up from the bottom of the options, starting at general settings. On the first page of general settings, there's nothing related to the gyro, but on page two, we have set orientation. Now this is because when we install the unit, because you can install it facing forwards, sideways, or even upside down, or on a side, we need to tell the unit which way we have installed it. This is important so that it knows which one of its three axes is which flight surface, so whether it's wing, elevator, or rudder, so that it knows which axis to compensate on as and when necessary. So in set orientation, it'll simply ask us to lift the tail and then twist the rudder of the plane. And in doing so, it will detect which of the axis have been moved and therefore knows which way the box has been installed. Aircraft type. Here we can select what type of wing the plane has, be it a normal wing, conventional wing, or a delta wing, V-tail, or any other combination. Why do we need to do this? Well, if we set up the delta in the transmitter, the transmitter would send the appropriate signal for two servos directly to the receiver. One for the left wing, one for the right wing. And those two servos will act as elevator and aileron. Now, the problem with that is that the power box doesn't know if the input is actually trying to go up or turn or both with each one of those two servos because the signal has already been mixed. When we activate delta we need to leave the transmitter always as a standard conventional wing so that the signal arrives at the receiver and then to the power box as a control input so up, down, left or right and then the power box is the one that will actually mix that into a delta configuration. It can then add into that delta configuration any gyro settings or inputs that may be required at each point of the flight. We then have gyro sensitivity times four, which normally you wouldn't need unless you have particularly slow servos, for example, in which case I would still not recommend using it until you've gone through the whole process and reached 100% gyro gain in the normal procedure and then and only then try the times four. Okay working our way up we have input mapping. In here in theory we've already put in what channels operate the ailerons, the elevators, the rudders etc. And for the gain we would need to 
do one of two things. We can have a gain on a slider, in which case we would need to assign a slider to each channel that we want to be controlled by that. Or, as you would normally do when using the setup assistant, you'll simply have two options. One is for the flight modes. Flight mode will be a three-way switch. First mode being off, second mode being gyro on, and third mode being gyro on as well. The two on modes are completely user programmable and they can be set to have the exact same settings or different settings, whatever it is that you require. And then the previous one, gain assist, will be a single slider which would be used in the wizard and the flight assistant for tuning the gain in flight on a single slider. Normally that will have your plane flying very well very quickly in a single flight. However, it may require some fine tuning, which I'll explain in a moment. The other settings, gears, flaps, throttle, etc., we can also program as and when required. Output mapping, as we know, simply map which servos are going to be connected where on the power box. Server matching as required, that's a whole nother video, same as door sequencer, as and when required. And then finally, gyro settings. Now this is the big one. Okay, so here we have five options for the axes. So aileron A and B, elevator A and B, and rudder. So each one of those is going to bring up its own settings on the screen. We also have flight modes 1, 2 and 3. So 1 being off as we said, 2 being on and 3 being on. And the gain that we have in that particular flight mode. So as soon as we flip the switch on the transmitter to change from flight mode 1 to 2 to 3, the rest of the screen will change accordingly for the settings that we have set up for that axis, in this case, aileron A. After we've done this flight setup wizard, the gain will no longer be showing 0% in flight modes two and three. It will be showing the gain that we have inputted during the flight. However, this may not be completely ideal for our situation. Why would that be? Well basically because we are setting all three axes at the same time, as soon as one of those axes starts oscillating, we have to cut back to regain stability. Now on that particular axis we know that we've reached the maximum gain possible. However, on the other two axes, which haven't yet started doing that oscillation, we may be able to give them a higher gain value. In which case, remember during your flight which axis is the one that starts oscillating. We can make a note of that and ignore that channel from now on because we know that that particular channel has been perfectly set up. However, the other two channels we can slowly increase the gain manually, if we so wished, to such a point that we can try it in a couple of different flights until we find if we are going too high and that other axis starts oscillating, or if it doesn't, chances are the plane is grateful for that higher gain and will be flying even nicer than it already was. So, we can simply change the gain values here on each one of those different axes and on flight modes two and three, however we wish. The gain can go from zero to 100%. As we mentioned, if you ever get to 100% and 
and it still isn't enough, it still isn't oscillating, then go back into that general settings that was at the bottom previously and change your gyro sensitivity up to times four. Attitude assist is basically heading hold. Normally, I would recommend turning this on because it will add in a small amount of heading, a heading lock into your gain. Again, this won't fly the plane for you. It won't keep you on an absolutely perfect straight line unless you point it in the right direction. However, it will make the plane fly that little bit nicer, a little bit more like a pattern plane. It'll fly smoother and straighter and nicer. And that's the whole point of installing this gyro in our airplane, just to make it fly that little bit better. Direction normal. This is the direction in which the gyro rectifies. Now remember, as we said in the other video when doing the setup wizard, in addition to the way that the servos control the surfaces from our transmitter, and we need to make sure that up is up and down is down, and if not, we can reverse that on the transmitter. We also need to make sure that when the plane starts rocking one way or the other because of a gust of wind, for example, that the servo is going to rectify in the correct direction. We don't want the gyro to make it worse, we want to make it better. So in case it rectifies in the wrong direction, we would simply change the direction from normal to reversed. How do you check that? Well, in the setup wizard, there is a step when it will increase all gyro gains to 100%. That means that you can simply move the plane around slightly and you will see the servos and therefore surfaces start moving. Do so and check that they're correcting the right direction. The right direction, of course, being that the surface must move in the same direction that you are moving the flight surface itself. So if you lift the wing, the aileron must lift on that side as well. If you lift the tail, the elevators must go up. And if you move the tail to the left, the rudder should turn left as well. And finally, we have airspeed factor. Airspeed factor is when we are using the GPS that can come with the iGyro, which is optional, but it is the only gyro on the market that has a speed sensor, and this is a brilliant feature. What happens is the gyro knows how fast the plane is traveling. Now, when you're flying very slowly, you don't have much airflow over the surfaces, which means the gyro needs to correct using quite large inputs to continue giving that crisp control feel. Whereas when you're flying very quickly, the control surfaces are very effective and therefore only very small inputs are required. Now the iGyro with the GPS speed sensor is the only gyro on the market to take into account the speed at which you're traveling in order to calculate how much gain your model needs. So when you're traveling quickly, it will reduce how much those servos can move for the gyro, making the control inputs of the gyro very, very small and very smooth. Whereas when flying slowly, it will increase those gyro gains in such a way that regardless of the speed at which you're flying, the gyro is helping you out. The airspeed factor varies from one to five, and simply depending on how, fa how fast your plane can go compared to its low speed, so the speed envelope of your aircraft, this number simply indicates how quickly it will drop off the gyro gain. So a very fast model would have airspeed factor five because it can go from going slowly to very, very quickly whereas a slower aircraft would have a slower value. And there you have it. 
this is a little screen that we're going to be fine tuning all of our gyro sensitivities on. Simply find the one that we need, aileron, elevator or rudder, and make sure that we are making any corrections in the correct flight mode. So flight mode one is always zero, so it is off, and flight modes two and three are our actual flying gyro activated modes. Personally, I always use flight mode two as gyro settings which I have tested and know that they work and they are not excessive for the model. And flight mode three for testing higher and higher gains in such a way that I know that if I go too high on a particular gain, I can simply knock back to flight mode two with my safe gain values and then continue the flight with a gyro setting still on before landing and rectifying that amount of gain which I've gone too far on in flight mode 3. Okay guys, so hopefully between the previous video which showed how to use the setup assistant and flight wizard and this video showing you the minute details of manual fine tuning, tweaking and even setting up entirely by hand if you so wish. There's nothing now that you can't do with your iGyro. I'm sure that you'll have your plane flying brilliantly well in absolute no time at all. By all means, if you have any further questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll reply personally to every single one of them. Drop us a like if you found this helpful. And especially remember to subscribe to the channel for future updates. We make a nice ball for you so you can subscribe just right here. Or take a look at some of my other videos. I'll put them just about here.